All right, Ms. Pryor, would you restate your question for Mr. Orton, please? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Orton, you never <coughs> reported to the police that you were a victim of a home invasion in which a gun and a knife were used, did you? No, but can I explain? Whenever the accident happened and I told Mr. Borland to call 911, I told him I told him to tell the sheriffs that uh, it had been a home invasion. I told him that a gun and a knife had been used. And then when I ran back to the wreck down there, and then the sheriff, the, the sheriff deputy, uh, I don't know which one, what his name is, come up there, and I ran up to him and I tried to tell him. He pulled a gun out on me and told me to get my hands on the hood. Okay, let me ask you this. If, if someone was running at you with blood all over them and there was a deadly collision that had just occurred, would you be, could, would Your you Honor, understand I'm, why I'm he object, asked? Excuse me, I want to object on grounds of speculation. I'll sustain as to the form of the question. Okay. What would you do if someone ran at you, bloody, next to a deadly collision? Ma'am, he pulled a gun out on me from here to Mr. Bethridger that far away and I'm in my boxer shorts. I had no weapon on me. Running at him. I was going like his hey. Okay. I'm trying to get trying to get help from him. And I mean he didn't hurt you or anything, did he? Who? Any of the deputies. No, he said he's gonna stick the dog on me if I moved. But he he's, didn't, did no, he? I didn't move. You said you got in the ditch at some point and sat down. After I asked him, I said, can I sit down? Yeah, he said, okay. After he went I, I, after he went down there and seen, you know, I imagine he went down there and seen they had a gun and a knife and figured out what was going on. Okay. Now, um, you, You, let me back up just a minute. You talked about going to your neighbor's house and that you ran over there yelling for help. Yes, ma'am. Um, and I may have misunderstood. Did you say that you did or did not ask to come into his house? Yeah, I wanted to come into his house. Did you ask him that? I think I did, yes. I can't say for sure, though. Did I you can't... even wait around for an answer before you took off? I think after he turned those lights on, uh, the spotlights, that's when I got down off the porch and hid behind that tree, right, right in front of the steps right there. Okay. So you said it was dark out there. Yes, ma'am. And then he turned the lights on. Yes. But it still was pretty dark everywhere else, right? Yes. It, it was only, his lights only went out maybe, you know, 10 or 15 feet from his house, but it was, you know, all around his house right there. And it's but, a pretty rural area out there, right? Yes, ma'am. Wooded and... Yes. There's a lot of places you could have hid. I was hiding. And you could have stayed hiding when they left, couldn't you? I could have. But <laughs> they pulled out of the driveway and said, that, you can't stop me, I'm going to kill your babies. That's not what they said, is it? Yes, ma'am, that's exactly what you they said. You can't even remember what you asked or said to your neighbor, but you are sitting here today and want them to believe that you remember word for word what these people said as they were pulling yeah, out of your stuck driveway. out my head. Yes, ma'am. That stuck out in my head. Even though the neighbor remembers it differently. Well, I don't know what he said. What he heard. I know what I heard. Well, you sat here and listened to him testify, right? Right. And he said, the comment was, you're killing my baby. But you've turned that to make it fit what you want us to believe, right? All I can tell you is, when they was in my house, he said he was mafia, and they to kill me and my whole family. Now, and why would the mafia... I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Why would the mafia be after you? You know what? That ain't made no sense to me neither. But instead of staying put, waiting for authorities to come and help you and your childhood friend and the girl that you've just spent the night with, mm -hmm. instead of waiting for them to come and help you, you decided to take matters into your own hand at that point. Is that a question? I'm asking you, did you decide to take matters into your hand at that point? Ma'am, you know what? It, it takes police 45 minutes to get out to my house, maybe. I don't know. And my mom was three miles up the road. I, you know, yeah, I got in my truck, and I drove up there, and I drove fast. 
and I'm sorry for it. Did you see Curtis when you went and got in your truck? No, ma'am. Uh-uh. Didn't even worry about him, did you? Yeah, when I was at the scene, I told him to go back to check on uh, Curtis and Brandy. But you didn't think about them when you took off in your truck? No, ma'am. I, I, I'm sorry I didn't.